Yo, what's up, Smallmouth Crush? We're up here in upstate New York, Cayuga, getting ready for an ABA bass tournament tomorrow. I got one full day of practice on this uh, cooler day. High's only gonna be in the 60s. Water temp 70. And the fish aren't really cooperating from what I heard. So we got some work to do. You guys are come, coming along. See if we can find some fish for this tournament. That's all coming up. All right, going through the video uh, of practice as well as the tournament. Uh, discovered that I'm gonna have to do a little bit of talking in the studio for you guys to even make this somewhat entertaining. I don't know if you can make a, 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 a tournament uh, like this entertaining because uh, just give you a spoiler, I basically sucked in this event. Um, not my style, that's for sure, but I did. It happens, right? It happens to uh, to every each and every one of us. And so I wanted to talk about that because, you know, you're going to have pretty bad tournament days, okay, if you do this long enough. It's going to happen. And yeah, I'd love to show you the highlights of me battling fish and putting a plan together and blah, blah, blah. But it didn't really pan out that way for me. So we got to resort to uh, licking our wounds and maybe focusing on what we learned from this event. And I'd like to share that with you guys. So the Finger Lakes, they're uh, located in upstate New York. Uh, there's a bunch of them. They range in different sizes but uh, they're all real long and skinny, bowl shaped, so a lot of grass on the edges. Um, there's a lot of hard cover up on the shore. So you have docks, rocks, laydowns, super shallow. Those fish get up there, don't get me wrong. But then you have just a grass edge that tapers out. And uh, out in the middle of some of these finger lakes, it could be, I'm guessing here, two, three, four hundred feet deep. So you're gonna have landlocked salmon, trout, things like that, hanging out at those depths, chasing alewives. Uh, but so you want to focus really on that and it varies there's underwater points and stuff but you know you don't want to get out too much deeper than 25 30 feet is what I'm assuming now I'm sure there's massive schools of big smallmouth which are found in these finger lakes that are probably hanging out suspended over really really deep water chasing bait fish uh, I didn't have time I had one day of practice to even attempt to do something like that and it's really, you know, Cayuga's famous. It's probably one of the best largemouth lakes in the country. Now, you wouldn't know that uh, today or by the tournament results, but I think it is one of the top largemouth lakes out there. I don't have a lot of experience on Cayuga. I fished all the Finger Lakes, but I've only been on Cayuga maybe three or four times uh, prior. And, uh, you know, the last time I was there was about a month ago for a half a day, and I caught my biggest largemouth, uh, northern largemouth ever, just under eight pounds. So there is some big fish in there. Let's show you that clip real quick and then we'll uh, we'll get back to talking a little bit about the tournament and what my game plan is and some of the reasons why maybe the fishing isn't as good as we were all expecting for this tournament. Good one. This is a toad. This is a Cayuga toad. That's what we're doing today. Fishing grass, deep grass, for big largemouth bass. If I can get this guy up, this is about a seven pounder here. I don't know, he looks big. How big is that? I don't know, but we might have to put him on the scale. Because that's a uh, that's a thick All one. All I needed there. was five of those. Five for 40 pounds, I'd take it. I'd probably do all right in that event. No, that wasn't the case, guys. So they sprayed the lake. They put chemicals and killed a lot of the grass because the recreational boaters, the homeowners, they don't want to go swimming and have their feet touch the, uh, the grass and the skiers and wakeboarders don't want to, you know, land in a, a, a pile of a matted up grass bed. So for some reason they think it's a, 
a bad thing. And so uh, they recently went around and killed the grass. I got a little clip later on here in the video we're going to share with my experience of why I think it's not the greatest thing to, and some things maybe you can do to help get the word out. I, it's a battle, I don't think, us anglers versus the landowners and the people that use the lake are ever going to come to an agreement with. It's uh, it's sad, but it definitely hurts the fishery, no doubt. doesn't help it. Um, all the politics, everyone in New York pretty much sucks when it comes uh, to politics. But anyways, that's my personal opinion. Whatever. Let's keep going. So practice. So I really wanted to try to find a group of, of largemouth hanging out on deeper grass. And so to do that with a limited amount of time of practice, my goal was to throw a search bait, throw a reaction bait, throw a crank bait, a deeper diving crank bait on the grass edges, 12 to 18 feet of water, and just cover water. There's some underwater points, there's some uh, places where you want to look for some different grass transitions, things like that, maybe some thicker grass, openings in grass. I mean, there's a lot of things you want to concentrate on, but you want to find out where those fish are hanging out. And for me, the best way to do that is going to be with a reaction bait. Now, I would love to find a bunch of them and then catch them on reaction baits, and then once that slows down, maybe do a little you know, finesse fishing. Drop shotting, of course, will come into play. Uh, you can fish an exposed hook in the grass just as well as a Texas rig drop shot, uh, depending on how thick the grass is. You could throw a Carolina rig, you could throw a Ned rig, you could throw a tube, you could uh, snap a tube out of the grass, you could drag a Texas rig brush hog, a big worm, whatever you have confidence in. Uh, it doesn't have to be finesse. I mean, you could throw a big old 10 inch worm uh, for, for all I know. Uh, I just felt more comfortable hoping to come across some fish with a crankbait and then slowing it down finesse fishing. Caught a lot of pickerel, okay? A lot of pickerel got me excited throughout the day, but it was tough. I just bounced around, did some looking, and uh, really didn't have the results I was looking for. Uh, managed one little three pounder, just under three pound largemouth, and uh, my buddies that were fishing it, my buddy JP was fishing it, he was struggling. A lot of guys were struggling. So I knew we were up, um, you know, I knew our backs were against the wall here. And I just didn't have the experience. I mean, maybe if you're local and you spend a lot of time on that lake, you know the real good areas, and that's where you focus on. I had no idea where those areas are, so I just went fishing. was a theme. I even saw this one on the graph thinking it was a big old large mouth. Nope. But I did catch one bass in practice. I mean, it's not like I zeroed. All right, so it was a tough day. I caught one lousy bass on the crankbait. I have to reevaluate my life this afternoon while I'm rigging up. Uh, it's gonna be a tough bite. Someone's gonna catch five. They always do. Fishing's weird, you know? Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. However, when it comes to fishing, sometimes doing that is just the ticket. You know, today could have been an off day, although I know, based on reports, it's been an off couple of weeks here but I feel if I keep cranking tomorrow I might run across five good bites so I'm gonna be doing a lot of cranking for sure and maybe a little bit of finesse fishing but more than likely I'm gonna just go for it 
what else do I got to lose at this point? We're just trying to make the championship. Let's head around in, get rigged up. Oh, it's been tough out there. Real tough. I think they, uh, they've been looping some weeds around here. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Dang rich people. Well, yeah, hopefully we can put a stop to that, but. Hello. Hi there. Can I take a quick look? Ah, uh, no thanks. All right, so if you saw that girl coming up uh, to me asking to check out my boat, uh, I told her no. Now, normally, if a chick's going to come up to your boat and wants to take a look at it, you let her, right? Not this case. So this is one of them yellow jackets, I call them, at the uh, boat ramps. They're sitting there with their little table, and maybe they're, uh, they're camping chair, reading a book. And what they're doing is they're checking for invasive species. Um, and so when you pull your boat out of the water, they're going to... I don't know who's paying these people, if this is a volunteer thing or or what, but um, I hope it's a volunteer thing. I don't know. Tax dollars going to, uh, going to work there. So she comes over, she wants to take a look at your boat, and this happens all over the country, I know, but especially in upstate New York, a lot of these lakes will run into that, and she'll, uh, she'll want to inspect it. Now here's the deal, here's the dirty little secret that they don't tell you about. Uh, so if they find something, like some milfoil, which is great for bass, good spawning habitat, good cover, good everything, they're going to report that, and that just goes into their numbers, their reports, that say, hey, you know, we're starting to see more milfoil in this section of the lake, maybe we need to bring up, break out the glyphosate uh, Monsanto and, and start dumping it into the water, and that's what's going to happen. So I just tell them, kindly, nicely. Hey, thanks, but no thanks. Don't be looking at my boat, girl. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll report no foil, and then, those are, then they spray the, the lake, you know what I mean? That's crazy. signs all over the building. Hey, hey. How we doing? How you doing? Not too bad. I gotta get my truck moved here. Because <laughs> they don't like that I took up all these spaces. So we're going to try to get tighter here. Sorry for the inconvenience, fellas. Cranking pretty much most of the day. Um, so we're ripping these crankbaits, and you'll see tomorrow in the video, but we're ripping the crankbaits through the grass. Today I went back and forth between a graphite rod with straight braid, 20 pound braid, cast it out, tick the grass. I'm in like 12 to 15 feet of water. Tick the grass, rip it. It comes clean, but I had a couple pickerel bites and I lost the fish because I, I, I just overpowered the crankbait with my setup. So I, I, I went with two of my Dobbins uh, fiberglass rods and one's 20 pound braid and one's 12 pound fluorocarbon. So I'm gonna start with the fluorocarbon and see if that works. And if I get into some thicker grass, then I'll go to the braid on the same rod. And if I'm still getting too much grass and I can't rip it clean, I will pick up that graphite rod and try that. But that's my plan tomorrow. I do have, obviously, um, I'm gonna have a drop shot and a Ned rig, a few other finesse baits rigged up to go. That's what we're doing. I don't really have spots. I got that one little area and then I'm just gonna run new water. So you'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, normally I fall back on my strengths, which would be finesse fishing, drop shotting, things like that. And I just couldn't find a group of fish or I couldn't find an area that I felt held a lot of fish. I might find that tomorrow and then I could maybe slow down just a little bit, but I don't think that's gonna be the uh, the case for me. I think it's gonna be strictly power fishing, throwing the crankbait quite a bit. All right guys, here we are morning. 
it's time, ABA Cayuga. And uh, pretty good field of boats. We'll qualify for the uh, big reward money, which is awesome here for the ABA. 5,000 first place guaranteed. Plus Nitro Rewards is another five grand. So it's $10,000 if I win today. Although, based on my practice that you guys saw, it's gonna be a little tricky, but I think we'll be around them. We just have to hopefully get five bites and uh, see what happens. All right, we've got Nathan with us today. Guten Tag. From Canada. I don't even know if that's legal, Brohim. We won't talk about that. Should not have happened, DQ. What are you, a, a sports uh, celebrity, right? Yeah, I'm a professional. Is that what say? professional celebrity? Professional <laughs> All right, we're going to try to get five in the boat. So I decided to go with the cinematic, inspirational piano music as the intro to the morning takeoff. Maybe it'll provide us some positive vibes. Maybe I'm just thinking as I edit this, I'll actually catch a fish. No, guess what? This was the highlight of the morning of the whole tournament. Catching this. It was a tough one, guys. I think that was like the only fish I caught all day. And I fished hard. Nathan, my co, he caught two. Doing a little shaky shaky somehow. I'm doing 20 miles an hour down a grass bed and he's throwing a shaky head eighth ounce worm 100 feet back and managed to take fourth place. Check out those waves. Yeah, we speared some waves coming in. What a way to end the day, soaking wet. All right, so that's it. That's how it went. I zeroed. I zeroed. Now keep in mind, half the field also zeroed, but come on, Travis, really? No, for real, <laughs> I zeroed. Um, 16 something, 17 one, which normally doesn't even cash a check on Cayuga. So just an all around messed up day. But listen, all I have to do is fish three of these. The first one was on Lake Ontario, St. Lawrence River. That's when I had some mechanical issues and had to get picked up at a ramp. Didn't make it to weigh in. Didn't even make it. Long story. Second was uh, Oneida. Did well there. And then this is the third. So if I fish three of these, I automatically qualify for the championship, which is up on the St. Lawrence River, uh, which I've already fished it as I'm editing this video. So the next project is going to be the St. Lawrence event, which will be, uh, hopefully we got enough footage there. But um, whatever, guys. I don't know, what would I do differently? <sighs> well, I know what I would do differently. Uh, I'd go a little shallower, but, you know, in ABA, yes, it's a lot of money to win. It's top heavy, but it doesn't make sense, you know, if, if you got a normal job and, and you're working, you got weekends off, man, it's hard to commit one, two, three, you know, even three days of practice for a smaller tournament like that. But you really do need to put in your time. Uh, if I had two, three, four more days, could I have figured something out? Maybe, maybe not. But at what cost? You know what I mean? So it is what it is. I just try to show up and, and fish the hardest that I can. Um, Thankfully, you know, I, it's rare that I get to go to a body of water nowadays where I don't have past history and experience. So uh, this is one of those times when I just had no history to fall back on, and so it happens. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've got some other cool videos moving forward. We're going to get back into live now that I'm kind of home permanently. I'm not up on Lake Ontario as much. We're going to be start fishing on the Chesapeake a little bit more. Guaranteed I'll be making a couple trips up north yet this year. It's not over yet. Although, I'm pretty much ready to call this year an end and just move on with our lives. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave any likes and comments below. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.